so grateful for your goodness. Hallelujah. So still our minds and our hearts and our spirits. Lord, prepare our hearts for worship today. God, we pray that anything that's not like you, that will be removed from our presence even now, that you would receive our praise and inhabit our praise and receive our worship. Lord, we're not here today because we've been so holy, because we've been so perfect, but we're here today because we need you. We need you in our lives. We need you to speak to our hearts and to our spirits. We need you to help us to grow closer to you. So, God, we pray that this will be a day. This will be a day that we experience your power and your presence, but most of all, even your love. For it's in your love that we're changed, oh God. We thank you right now that you're renewing minds. You're renewing spirits. You're encouraging. You're raising up the bow down heads. Even now, God, in the name of the Lord Jesus, we thank you for every person under the sound of our voice, those who are here, those who are yet on their way, those who would even watch us via live stream today. And we declare that this is the day that you have made. And we shall rejoice and be glad therein. We are anticipating a move of your spirit. And we say, have thine own way in this place. We yield and we submit to your will and to your way. We thank you right now, God, for being a God who never fails. We thank you that you have been consistent in our lives. We thank you right now that when men, friends, family have turned their backs, you've been right there all the time we say thank you today my god and we say have thine own way in this place be thou glorified be thou lifted up be thou exalted in our midst oh god we shake off every ounce of heaviness we shake off anything that's not like you and we tap into the supernatural power of the Holy Ghost who lifts our head and encourages our spirit. Lord, you are still making crooked places straight. My God, you're still bridling our tongue and renewing our minds and renewing our strength. For your word declares they that wait upon the Lord, they shall renew their strength. Renew the strength of those who are weary today, even as young eagles renew their strength. Oh God, let us stand in the strength of the Lord today. It's in you that we live. It's in you that we move. It's in you that we have our very being. So we say, have thine own way in this place. Be thou glorified and lifted up. It's in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus. Oh, Satan, the Lord rebuke you. You have no authority, you have no power, you have no place or any space in this worship experience. You have no place in the lives of my brothers and my sisters. We belong to the Lord Jesus and hallelujah, we thank you for relationship today. So we commit this time into your hands and we celebrate your goodness. We celebrate your faithfulness. We celebrate your love. It's in the mighty name of Jesus. Come on, people of God, would you clap your hands and celebrate in here? <laughs> Amen. Come on, we thank God for who he is. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, come on, Zion. Can you thank God for another day? Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Come on, if you are able, would you stand with me for the reading of the Lord's word, followed by our opening prayer. Amen. Tazaria is reading, amen, our scripture today, and amen. Marlena will open us in prayer, and we ask that you would remain standing after that. On the second page of a bulletin, you will find our hymn for today, What a Friend We Have in Jesus. Amen. I'll be reading Isaiah, the 54th chapter, 11 through the 17th verse. O thou afflicted, tossed with tempest, and not comforted, behold, I will lay thy stones with fair colors, and lay thou thy foundations with sapphires. And I will make thy windows of agates, and thy gates of carbuncles, and all thy borders of pleasant stones. And all thy children shall be taught of the Lord, and great shall be the peace of thy children. In righteousness, Shalt thou be established, thou shalt be far from oppression, for thou shalt not fear, and from 
terror, for it shall not come near thee. Behold, they shall surely gather together, and but not by me. Whosoever shall gather together against thee shall fall for thy sake. Behold, I have created the smith that bloweth the coals in the fire, and that bringeth forth an instrument for his work. And I have created the waster to destroy. No weapon that is formed against thee shall prosper, and every tongue that shall rise against thee in judgment thou shalt condemn. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord, and their righteousness of, is of me, saith the Lord. I read Isaiah 54, chapter 11 to the 17th verse. The word of the Lord has been blessed. Can you bow your heads and close your eyes? Lord, I thank you for this day you have made. I thank you for waking us up this morning and letting us all be here today. I thank you for keeping and covering us and keeping us safe, Lord. Amen. Amen. Come on, we're going to sing this song together. If you don't know it, you certainly can follow along in your bulletin. The words are there printed for you. We ask that we will lift our voices in concert and be reminded of the friend who will stick closer than any brother. Anybody glad that you got a friend in Jesus? I said, anybody excited that you got a friend in Jesus? Amen. All over the building. Come on, let's lift our voices. What a friend. Singing. What a friend we have in Jesus. All our sins and grief to bear. All our sins and griefs to bear. What a privilege it is to carry. Everything to God in prayer. Everything to God in prayer. Oh, what peace. Come on, everyone. Sing. Said, oh, oh what, what peace. peace we often forfeit. Oh, what needless pains we oh, bear. Oh, what needless pain we bear. All because we do not carry. Everything to God in prayer. Everything to God in prayer. Have we trials and temptations? Have we trials and temptations? Is there trouble anywhere? Is there trouble anywhere? We should never be discouraged. Take it to the Lord. Take it to the Lord in prayer. Oh, can we find, can, can we find a friend so faithful? Who will all our sorrows share? Who will all our oh, thank sorrows you, Lord. Share. Jesus knows our every weakness. And you can take it to the Lord in prayer. Take it to the Lord in prayer. Are we weak and heavy laden? Come on, say. Are we weak and heavy laden? Cumbered with the load of care. Cumbered with the load of care. Precious Savior, still our refuge. Take it to the Lord in prayer. Take it to the Lord in prayer. Oh, oh, oh to thy friends said, do thy friends despise for sin. Come on. Take it. Take it to the Lord in prayer. In his arms. will find thou will find a soul in Verse number one, one more time. Come on. What a friend. 
with Jesus joy behold how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together 
in unity. And I'm just glad to be in the house of prayer one more time. Are you excited to be in church today? There's no other way I would want to spend my Sunday morning than in the presence of the Lord. And our service is enhanced just by your presence being here today. I want to thank God and certainly welcome all of our guests who are here with us in the sanctuary. And you who are even watching on Facebook Live. Come on, if you're glad to be in church in the cyber sanctuary. Come on, you can clap in the comment section. We see you there. We're grateful for you watching and tuning in. Uh, this Lord's Day. I want to just say thank you so very much, uh, New Jerusalem, and all of our helpers who have been helping hands in this season. You know, uh, we have been uh, hit very hard. We've had about uh, five deaths already in the year 2021 in our congregation, uh, but the Lord has been so faithful. Amen. I want to tell you, certainly we do have a homecoming celebration that will be here on Wednesday. Uh, the viewing hours for Sister Cherry Nicholson will be from 11 to noon, that's a walkthrough visitation, and then at 12 noon is the celebration of life. Uh, please pay attention to our group tags and to our website or our Facebook page. We will update you. Uh, we understand that we have a limited amount of space. Some families are larger than others, and it lets us know how much seating we can have for our church family. Uh, but you understand, it's just the time that we're in with COVID concerns. Uh, we're going to do our level best to keep everyone safe. So if there's extra seating, we will allow you to come and let you know uh, how many seats we have. We're going to ask that you would just, uh, let's just be sensitive to that. And if we aren't able to get to the sanctuary that we ask that we will tune in online and we'll be broadca broadcast on our Facebook Live page. And certainly we're praying with the Robinson and Nicholson, amen, and Robert's family in this season of transition. So we have that service on Wednesday and then Friday, your pastor will be sharing with another family uh, your logistic sentiments at, at the funeral home, but I just solicit your prayers, okay? Would you pray much for me that the Lord will give us the words to share uh, with that family? Uh, but the Lord has been gracious. I want all of you to continue uh, to pray for the sick and the shut-in. I want us to continue to pray for those who are wavering in their faith. Amen. Let's pray for them. I want to take a moment to thank all of our prayer warriors who were meeting us for the last three weeks at 6.30 a.m. Come on, let's clap our hands for our intercessors. The Lord has been so kind uh, meeting us every, every single day. Now listen, family, when I stand before you to give announcements, pay attention because I'm, I'm not just talking just to be talking. Uh, I'm, I'm telling you pertinent information that's relevant for our congregation. So oftentimes we make announcements and then you talk about you don't know it's because you're zoning out in announcement time. Amen. Pay attention to what the announcements that we give. Uh, it's not that I need you to listen to me per se. I just don't want you to miss out on something. Uh, many of you were confused about the service of Sister Sue, but we gave that information uh, via our group text as well as a front. You just got to pay attention. Amen. Amen. I can't hear too well. Amen. So we want to make sure that we're doing that, do our level best. Listen, Wednesday night at 6.30, uh, we will continue in our Bible study session. Uh, we'll be teaching the word of the Lord. Certainly, we're looking forward to you gathering uh, on Facebook Live, and you can hear our lesson as we continue to teach the word of the Lord. Thank you, faithful Sunday school students, for tuning in every Sunday morning at 9.30 a.m. on our conference call. We appreciate you. Uh, so very much sometimes the technical difficulties amen but you know what to do by now we're responsible enough to go on with the meeting amen amen if i don't show up on a sunday morning amen somebody better get up here and preach and then somebody come find where in the world i'm at amen <laughs> amen because i'm gonna check in if i'm not gonna be here with somebody but uh, you know don't let the whole week about pastor wasn't that church don't nobody know where you're at listen i live alone somebody because do Send somebody. Amen. Y'all don't want to say nothing to me in here. Amen. But we are just delighted. I am excited. My aunt is here all the way from Greenville, Alabama. Amen. My aunt Dot is here. That's my mama's sister. Amen. And we love her so very much. We're grateful. And for all of our guests. And Willa is here. Yesterday was her birthday. She getting the big girl on me. Happy birthday, Willa. And to all of our January birthdays, we say happy birthday to you. Amen. Y'all getting old. Y'all getting old. Y'all getting old. What you say, Sister Bobby? You just getting better. You, you ain't getting all right. All right. I feel you. I feel you. Hey, you know what happens as we transition out of January? We start moving very quickly towards February. 
Oh, before I do that, I want to say thank you to all of our helpers and aides during the MLK celebration that we hosted uh, for the NAACP. They were here, and I tell you, it was a wonderful worship experience. I want to thank those who served in various capacities, our media team, and certainly our uh, hospitality ministry. Thank you so very much. As we prepare to go into February, the first Sunday in February, I know traditionally we normally wear black and white as we prepare for the Lord's Supper, but we're going to ask in honor of Black History Month that those of you who want to join in with us, we're going to be wearing African attire. We're going to go to the motherland a little bit. Amen. You're certainly welcome to do that. You don't have to do that. It's not mandatory. You can wear khakis. You can wear jeans. You can wear a five-piece suit. However you feel comfortable is just fine with us. We just want you to know you're welcome to do that with us, okay? And then all month long, we'll be introducing our new series, and we're excited to do that every February for, I believe, my goodness, almost 11 to 10 years now. Uh, we've been doing a teaching preaching series that incorporates modern times with what's going on, historical value, and social justice, as well as black history. So we will introduce that series to you. I think the ushers have some handouts. If they have not given it to you already, they'll be handing that out to you. I'm going to ask that you would take that and certainly, matter of fact, come get some more that we can give them a couple. I want you to invite somebody. Tell them to come. It won't cost them nothing. Amen. They can just come and hang out with us for about 60 to 90 minutes. They can come hang out with us here at New Jerusalem. We're going to be uh, our thematic thrust this year. We're pulling it from uh, the new uh, uh, sensation, the young folks hip to it, uh, us older people, we catching up. Amen. It's called TikTok. There's some things called challenges on TikTok, and we'll be having some challenges from TikTok to the church. Amen. And we'll be doing a four-part series. It's going to be exciting. It's going to be fun, and we look forward to it. Amen. Amen. God bless you so very much. We're grateful. Even at this time, those of you who are watching online, even here, if you want to give electronically, you don't have to wait on a certain offertorial period. You can come on, get on Givelify.com, our giving app. You'll see our church logo. Uh, make sure you're giving to New Jerusalem in Sandusky, Ohio. Amen, because there's other New Jerusalems throughout the United States of America. But you can give that gift even now. And if you have Cash App, it is the cash sign, New J Sandusky. Amen. New J Sandusky. You can sow that to you. Those of you who are here on your way out, you see these black baskets. You certainly uh, can sow your seed today uh, as you leave. If you're being blessed by the ministry or you just want to give back, you're more than welcome to do that. Amen. Amen. The Lord bless you richly. Uh, next week is the fifth Sunday. We look forward. I want you to come prepare. You know, every fifth Sunday, we always try to make sure uh, that we sow a special seed uh, for membership appreciation. So let's come prepare to do that. Uh, as a matter of fact, we might even do that today. Uh, we'll see what happens. It's, it's, it's a good day. It's a good day. Well, it's the fourth Sunday. Well, our young people ministered to us on the fourth Sunday. Amen. And we're excited to hear from them. So y'all help them. It's two of them today. So would y'all help them today? Don't y'all just look at them. We don't need spectators. We need participators. Can you clap your hands and uh, encourage our young people as they come to Zaria and Marlena? Amen. Come on, lift your voice and sing. <laughs>
Bless the Lord. Come on, somebody bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Come on, anybody want the Lord to use you? Anybody grateful that God still uses us in spite of ourselves? Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Our life does not belong to us. Once you give the Lord your life and your heart, it's no longer about you. I know that might mess with some of us, but it's no longer about you. Hallelujah. Can we lift that declaration to the Lord, everybody? My life is not my own. My life is not my own. To you I belong. To you. I give myself, I give myself, I give my, to you, to you. Come on, lift that to Jesus. My life is, my life is not to you, to you. I, my God, my God. I give myself, oh, oh. come on. Sound like a choir. Give me some parts of here. My life is not my own, say. My life. I knew you could do it. Come on. To you. Give myself, Jesus. Oh, thank you, Lord. Surrender to your will and to your way. My life is. Give myself away. I give myself. I'm gonna say it like you mean it. I give myself away. I give myself away. So one more time. Give myself. Oh, oh, thank you, Lord. Hey, give myself so that you, so that you, oh, use me, Lord, in your service. For your glory, yeah, use me, Lord, to help someone along the way. Use me, Lord, in your presence, please let me stay. Give myself away. Would you lift it one more time? Oh, come on, say it with me. I give, I give myself 
so that you Jesus so that you Lord oh I give myself away yeah oh give myself away so you Isaiah chapter 54 of the word of the Lord as we have been the last several weeks on this journey of growing and expanding it is important that we know that God requires something of us I said God requires something of us and oftentimes we want to put pressure on God to perform for us, to do what we think he ought to do, when we think he ought to do it, because we think he ought to do it. But the reality is God is going to be consistent. God is going to be faithful. The challenge comes how will we respond to the God in whom we say we serve. I'm really teaching already. So it's important and imperative as we're in this new year that our change of behavior, the pattern of our behavior is not merely lip service, but it is a reality that we say, God, we want to change for the better. I kind of like that about God. He doesn't let any perfect people in. Y'all missing what I'm trying to tell you in here. See, the problem with perfect people is they don't realize that they're imperfect. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry. I... Hallelujah. Everybody that God used has been flawed. I marvel at that. I marvel at that because God says, I'm perfect, I'm holy, I'm wise, I know everything, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to use people who are imperfect to represent a perfect and a righteous God. I find it amazing. 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 And you know what else? I'm grateful. I'm grateful that he chooses to use us in spite of ourselves. I'll tell you what I'm going to do for the sake of time today. I'm just going to read a few verses because Tazaria, uh, she already read uh, all of our scriptural backdrop for today. So let me, for the sake of time, read verses 16 and 17 of Isaiah chapter 54. Is that all right? Two verses. Two verses. If you're able, certainly you're welcome to stand with us for the reading of God's word. Listen to the word of the Lord. Behold, I have created the smith who blows the fire of coals and produces a weapon for its purpose. I have also created the ravager to destroy. No weapon that is fashioned against you shall succeed and you shall refute every tongue that rises against you in judgment this is the heritage <laughs> of the servants of the Lord and their vindication from me declares the Lord. Now, I, 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 I'm really trying to contain myself, but just because it's Sunday, let me read verse 17 one more time. This might not be for everybody, but it might be for somebody. No weapon 
that is fashioned or formed against you shall succeed. Somebody just shout, it won't work. It can't work. It couldn't work if it wanted to. And watch this. You shall refute every tongue that rises against you in judgment. Somebody say, your judgment is injustice. Hold up, hold up, hold up. It gets better, hold up. This is the heritage. This is what you get. This is the reward. This is what's on the life of the servants of the Lord. And their vindication, watch this, from me. Somebody shout, he's a great vindicator. Declares the Lord. Clap your hands in this place if you're grateful for the word of the Lord. On your way to your seat, tell your neighbor our thought for the day. We're still in the seat. Tell them it's time to expand. And tell them this. Tell them there's not a hater anywhere that can stop our expansion. Tell them there's not an enemy, there's not an adversary, there's not a friend nor a foe. There's not a negative talking family member, there's not a hating church member, there's not a high school sweetheart that wish they could have got me that couldn't get me no more. There's not... All right, all right, let me... <laughs> it just won't work. Lord, thank you so much for your word now. Go ahead and speak to us. Speak to us until it settles in our spirits. Speak to us till it resolves in our hearts. Speak to us until we cannot contain what you're going to do in our lives. And we will celebrate your goodness and shout heaven over. We give you all the praise, honor, and glory now. Use your servant. Use me in spite of me. We're grateful. We're grateful. We're grateful. We give you the praise in advance in Jesus' name. Amen and praise God. Come on, look at another neighbor. Say, neighbor, I've got good news. It's time to expand. Come on, clap your hands if you love the Lord. So we've learned in our previous lessons that expectation is necessary for expansion. That we must learn how to prepare to expand. You don't wait till your season of expansion to act like you want to get ready for it. You have to anticipate the needs that will come with the expansion. So last week as we began to talk, we, we talked about some things that God calls permanent. God speaks some things very clearly and very precisely into the lives of believers. We discovered that there is a powerful compassion that replaces brief abandonment. We discovered that there's permanent love that conquers brief anger with God. There's a powerful covenant of favor that's in the place of God's wrath. And climatically, last week, we discovered that permanent love and wholeness will be forever provided to the people of God. And all that is is that fancy talk that no matter how mad God gets at us or how angry he may be or much his anger is kindled towards us, his love always is greater than his anger. You don't know when to shout. You don't know. You don't know when to shout. You don't. Because I remember as a little kid, I would get in trouble with my parents. And sometimes I got put in time out. Sometimes I got a whooping. Sometimes I got a spanking. Sometimes I got on punishment. And I went through all of those things that no matter how much they punished me or no matter how much they rebuked or chastised me, ZZ, what I discovered, it only lasted a little while. 
eventually they were going to be loving on me again and eventually they were going to be taking me for pizza and ice cream eventually they were going to be giving me a little change to put in my pocket because their love was greater than their wrath I'm trying to tell you about a God who sits high and looks low who sees us in our vulnerable states and he gets upset we frustrate God sometimes we grieve the Holy Spirit but thanks be to God what I did in a moment of weakness what I did with my issues and my concerns and what I did to fail God he still looks at me and loves me in spite of it all and he says I love you flaws and all and I'm going to love you through your struggle I'm going to love you through your disappointments I'm going to love you through your vulnerabilities is there anybody grateful for the all encompassing all empowering all overness of God's love my God I thank you for loving me that while I was yet a sinner you died for me I thank you for loving me for making a way hallelujah even when I didn't know I needed a way I thank you for loving me that when I didn't even love myself you still love me is there anybody in New Jerusalem anybody watching online who said I've been there I didn't know what real love was like but then I discovered that he loved me anyway Many of you can attest because you've been rejected so much you didn't know what real love looked like you don't want to keep it real in the sanctuary, but after being rejected by friends and after being rejected by some parents, after being rejected by people that you were in love with, to know what real love is, sometimes you have to be exposed what fake love is to appreciate what authentic love is. My God, is there anybody that knows that some folks just love you as long as you're doing what they want you to do, as long as you're handing them stuff, as as long as you're giving them money, as long as they can drink off of you, get a free ride off of you, as long as they can have your body, as long as they can smoke a blunt with you, y'all ain't saying nothing, as long as they can get a free ride, but is there anybody in this house that says, I'm talking about an authentic love that loves me even when I don't have anything else to give back, my God, that will love me in spite of me, is there anybody grateful for the love of God, my God, that when he sees us, hallelujah, he doesn't just see or a weak and a wretched sinner but he sees his own self uh, the express image of himself uh, for we are fearfully and wonderfully made in his image and after his likeness uh, his love is greater <laughs> hallelujah so as we expand I think it's important as we discovered on last week that we see his expansion by what he calls permanent but I think we need to note today that we see God's expansion in Isaiah chapter 54. We see his expectation for our own personal expansion by what he does to our enemies. Y'all, y'all. Most of us think that God has to do everything for us directly. But you need to appreciate what God does for us indirectly pay attention stay focused it's okay it's a, you need to see what he does for us indirectly how he protects and preserves us even from our enemies now 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 reason why this is important because you need to understand that if it was up if it was up to the enemy if it was up to the enemy the enemy would never want to see you expand. Your enemies do not want to see you prosper. Your haters don't want to see you go to the next dimension. And I'm going to mess you up right here. I'm about to make you, I'm about to make you real uncomfortable in the sanctuary. Can I tell you the truth in here today? The truth of the matter is that not all of your haters are public haters. Lord, help your boy in here. You, you got some secret admirers. Even in your family. Who really love you because you got the same blood. But they trying to figure out why you keep on getting blessed and you don't qualify for the blessings that you're receiving. Lord, help your boy preach in here. I'm trying to tell you today that God 
is getting ready to expand you. That's why the Bible declares, uh, hallelujah, that I'll prepare a table before you, hallelujah, in the presence uh, of your enemies. How did your enemies get that close to you? Uh, because not all of your enemies are known enemies. Uh, some are frenemies, uh, friends and family who are real close. Uh, they at the table and they're watching God unfold a banquet before you, trying to figure out why you keep getting blessed. Uh, and you don't have that much education. You're not that good looking. You ain't got that much money. And God says, because my hand is on their life. Is there anybody here that can just shout with me a little bit that God's hand is on your life? Enemies don't like it. Haters can't stand it. Okay. When the hand of God is on your life, it makes other people want to put their hands on you. <laughs> but the problem is, uh, you can't put your hands on me uh, because I belong to the touch me nots. <laughs> Touch not my anointed <laughs> and do my servants no harm. You may try to put hands on me, but pump your brakes. When I've been called and anointed by God, you putting haterings on me is going to do more harm than good. Because the more you hate, the more God elevates. Is there anybody in this house that says, I got to this place stepping on haters? I got to the next dimension off the prayers against me. God turned around and bless me because of it. You meant it for evil, but God uh, yeah, meant it for my good and I come to serve notice uh, to some supervisor, to some foreman uh, that's hating on the children of God. The more you try to take us down, uh, the more God will promote us. Uh, you trying to fire us, God's trying to promote us. Uh, you're trying to dock our pay, God's getting ready to give us a raise uh, because it's time to expand. Jesus. You got to understand, family, that God is ministering to our hearts. And this is so important. Don't miss this. Don't miss this. God is ministering to our hearts, and he's reminding us that expansion is not always the reality first. Sometimes expansion is the mentality first. You're waiting on the manifestation of expansion. But God says you got to expand your mind because, see, if, if you, help me here, Holy Ghost. If, if you get to the promised land, but you still got a mind filled with Egypt, you don't know how to handle the milk and honey. Lord, have mercy. That's why, okay, let me see what I'll give you in 21st century lingo. That's why they say you can take somebody out the hood, but you can't take the hood out of them. Y'all ain't catching Huh? Because when I expand you, I need you to expand your mind. But don't, don't trip. I don't want y'all to trip because you might be from the hood. But I'm a living witness that God can take some folks who got hood in them. Help me here. And put some gospel gangster on it. Y'all ain't talking. God will take a Saul. Lord have mercy who was persecuting the church, who was slaying Christians, who was talking about us, had a little thug life in him. He said, what I need for you to do, I need you to stop hating on my folks and now I need you to preach. And the same hood that was in him when he was talking about the church was the glorious gospel that came through him as he was empowering the church. Look at somebody and say, my beginning is not my end. God is expanding me. Don't despise where I come from, but you better take another look and see where I'm going because it's time for me to expand. Slap somebody next to you and say God's expanding my mind. God's expanding my heart. God's expanding my spirit. God's expanding my finances. God's expanding my family. He's expanding us. My God. My God. My God. I'm, well, I'm trying to get through this thing. I'm trying my best. I'm trying my best to get through. Can I tell you, can I tell you, let me give you these points and I'll leave y'all alone. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to get this excited this early. But hallelujah, when God brings you out, you need to understand he brought you out for a reason. Because if he wanted you to stay there, he would have left you there. Huh? So when he brings you out of something, he brings you out now for you to become one who's empowered 
to go back and disciple others who have been through what you're going through. Uh, or rather going through what you've been through. Are you catching me now? See, what happens is it's so easy for us to get saved, to get healed, to get delivered. And now we want to sit back and be deep wonders. I'm holy. I don't know what's wrong with these young folks doing all this sinning. Woo! Lord, I can't hardly leave the house. Sin is everywhere. Woo! Jesus, help us. My God. Well, who, well, who helped you? Who, who? It, see, you, you can't keep walking around here like everybody waited till they got married to have babies and have sex. Oh, Y'all don't like me now. But somebody got to expand in their mind enough to say, baby, now come here. Let me tell you something. I can tell by the way you're walking. You're doing something you ain't got no business. See, this is the problem. This is the problem. We'll go whisper in the corner about it, but we won't say nothing. See, many of these spirits attach to children early. And if we can expand our minds enough, and let me say this while I'm there, parents, parents, you can't say in one breath it take a village to raise a child, and in the next breath say, you bet don't nobody say nothing to minds. See, you don't want nobody say nothing to yours until they need help getting out. But can you go down there and talk to the judge? Can't nobody say nothing to yours. I'm sitting there like, I tried to hope you five years ago. You like that word, Sister Willie? Hope you. You like that? Alabama, Mississippi, okay. I'm trying to help us. We cannot expand as a people until we understand, watch this, that everybody's not trying to hurt you. Everybody's not trying to tell you. And this is another thing. Let me tell y'all something. Let me tell you something. It's a family meeting. Can I call it? You cannot blame everything on the man. Now, some of this stuff ain't the man. It's not the system. It's our mentality. All right, now, y'all know I'm a social justice preacher. I'll talk about that another time, but y'all know I ain't got time to talk about all that stuff. Let me give you these points. Are you with me, media tech? We see, note this, we see his expectation of expansion by what he does to our enemies. Somebody say enemies. Now oh, watch this. You cannot get upset at outside enemies and you not, have not handled the inside enemy. See, we want to get mad at all these folks who hating on us, blocking our blessing. But then we don't talk about what we do. See, many of us, God has given us assignments and we've just been too lazy to do it. Whose fault is that? Huh? Many of us in relationship with God told us months, years ago to leave. And we still there, holding on, on the wing. You ain't even praying about it no more. You know it's been time to go. You unhappy, they unhappy, you're making each other miserable, you're just sitting up there looking at each other over convenience. Talking about, I just, I just want to be happy. No, you don't. You don't want to be happy in real life. You want to put out an illusion to people. And there's nothing get on my nerves. This, 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 ain't, this, ain't in the, this ain't the text, it's just Curtis Johnson. Right? Just let me have a moment right here, okay? Y'all stop fronting. Stop all this front. Posting all these pictures like you so in love and you done fought the whole day. Stop it. Okay, I'm back in the word now. I'm back in the word now. Trying to impress folk who can care less about you or your relationship. Work on expanding your relationship. So, I mean, I'm on, how, how some of these folk got time to work? They take more photo shoots than anything. All right, I'm back. So we see first point. I'm almost done. First point, we see the future foundation and features. That's in verses 11. All right, I want you to see this very clearly. I want you to see this in verse 11 and 12. He begins to talk about it. He says, man, look. He said, I'm going to set the stones. 
I'm put everything in place. Uh, he said, the storm has been tossed, it's been comforted, but then I'm going to make the pinnacle a gate. I'm going to make your gates be surrounded with precious stone. He gives a depiction of what it's going to look like. Can, 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 can he give us a picture of this beautiful and secure city? He says, I need you to understand that there is a place that you're going that has marvelous features and it has a secure and solid foundation. Can I argue today, for the believer, we are not getting caught up in what's going on in the world because we know this world is not our home. Somebody say, if you live right, <laughs> Heaven belongs to you. And, and then while I'm there, let's let me pause and park parenthetically and submit. We need to stop trying to send everybody to heaven because everybody ain't going. I done seen more heavenly birthdays than anything else. I ain't never seen nobody say happy birthday because I don't know where you're at. Everybody, happy heavenly birthday. Everybody ain't in heaven. Everybody ain't going. Y'all don't like me now. Huh? See, heaven is a prepared place for prepared people. And if we have not followed the prerequisites to get to heaven, we ain't going. That's just like assuming everybody graduate high school going to college. If you have not been, come on, you ain't did the right thing with your SAT scores, you have not been admitted into college, you ain't going. Don't matter how many folk give you graduation presents, no matter how many folk wish you could go, no matter how many of your family members, it's their alma mater, you're not getting in unless you're getting in. Okay. I ain't talking about nobody, but I'm just talking about what I'm talking about. It is a secure city. Look what it says. The foundation. Y'all with me in here? The foundation with sapphires. Now, this is a precious stone. Jewel of a stone, if you will. It, foundation. Can I, can I argue that our foundation must be solid and secure? I want to argue that maybe this is a depiction that our foundation is on Christ. You know, he is our chief cornerstone. He is the stone that the builders rejected. Come on. He is our rock in a weary land and a shelter in a time of storm. Huh? He is a stone hewed out of a mountain. He is that stone. Yeah. He's a foundation. Somebody shout a foundation. Amen. See, when you have a foundation like Christ, you're able to stand while others are falling. When stuff around you is shifting and changing, you're able to stand. Look down your row and say, keep on standing, keep on standing. Let me move very quickly. My time is running out on me. Number two, I need you to see this. I need you to see the favor of the fearless. The favor of the fearless. Now, know in Scripture over and over again, the Bible teaches us that we should not operate in the spirit of fear. Now, let's be honest. All of us have had some things in our life that made us a little fearful, all right? Let's be honest, me included. There's some things that I'm just not looking forward to, all right? Um, and there's a difference of being scared of something and living in fear. There is a difference. Uh, fear is a gripper of the mind that begins to affect the rest of your body and the way that you react and respond to things in life. Be careful with fear. Because fear gives you the false illusion of things. Fear will make you think that something is another thing when it's really another way. But God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of love, power, and a sound mind. So if we are operating in fear, it suggests that our mind has been shifted to look at something through a different lens and not appreciate the truth of who God is and what God's word has said about a particular situation. So fear can cause us to have panic attacks, can cause us to walk around with anxiety, 
Fear can keep us up at night. Fear can keep us from going into places and spaces because we're so fearful. But look at somebody and say, neighbor, what I need us to do. Come on, say it with me. Say, come on. Say, I need for what I need us to do. I need us to conquer our fears. And that's a word for anybody that's ready to expand in this season. We need to conquer our fears. Can I give you help in here today? A way to conquer your fear is we need the help of the Holy Ghost. We need the power of God to conquer our fears. What's your fear today? What, what is the very thing that rubs you the wrong way, that sets you on pins and needles? Some people have the fear of public speaking. Mm-hmm. You don't, you don't. Some people have a fear of large crowds. Yeah. Some people have fears of heights. You're going to have to get over it, especially if you want to be caught up in the rapture. Because somebody said, going up. <laughs> huh? Check me out. I remember um, early on in life, and I've, I've shared this before, but let me just reiterate. Uh, I, you know, third grade, I had to take speech lessons because I couldn't properly pronounce my R's. It was really tough for me to say my R's, and um, it was challenged. Of course, kids would tease and make fun of it, and so it was a little interesting. So what it did, it gave me a complex that I never really wanted to read or speak in front of a multitude of people. I'll talk to, you know, small groups was fine, uh, friends, family was fine, but large groups, I didn't want to do it because I had this fear like, okay, I might mispronounce this word or this R is going to come out wrong and uh, it's just not going to be good. You know, you know, those of you who have ever been teased, it's not the best experience. And so I was trying to uh, figure out how I was going to get over this fear, especially when the Lord called me into the ministry. I'm like, oh, man, I'm, I'm, I was cool, kind of singing in the background a little bit, singing tenor, holding that note down, playing drums a little bit, keeping the beat. I was cool. But now getting in front of all these people. And, you know, let me tell you something. Preaching is really a hard job. It's really a tough task because, you know, y'all real judgmental. Y'all looking at me like that. See? Some of y'all, <laughs> you sit up there and you got your little grade card out. He ain't do nothing today. Now he ain't do nothing. He ain't said nothing. <laughs> I just can't quite get into them. It, because we're, 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 we're tough. We're, we're, sometimes we're a tough crowd to move. But then we also examine every word. It's kind of like uh, 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 watching sports. You ever watch sports? Uh, let's use the NBA. It's basketball season. And, and, and you watch it and you watch the play and they show you the replay in slow motion pick and you make the call oh that was a foul how they missed that you saw it in slow motion the ref saw it in real time see when you up here preaching it's real time you know stuff is flowing you gotta go you can't talk too slow because then folks falling asleep on you you can't talk too fast then folk can't keep up so you gotta find this mid-ground cadence it's kind of crazy like you gotta you gotta try to find now okay i got two people over here that don't like when you get loud I got five people over here that don't like when you're too soft. I don't know how I'm going to please all my cousins in here. So it was a fear for me because I'm like, okay, you got hundreds of people, some cases thousands of people listening at you, and you got to try to pronounce every word right. Even if you got a good vocabulary, you might just mess up a word. You know, my folks from Alabama, we, we kind of country at times. So I get some of that Curtis Johnson come out of me and I'll say a word real fast, sound like my grandmama. And it just ain't right. And I'm like, what did I just say? She know what I, I just keep on going like I ain't messed it up, you know. But it gave me a complex. So I really had to take that fear of mine and that anxiety of mine to the Lord and say, God, look now, I'm not even up here for these people. I'm up here for you. Because you know me, I'd rather be in that corner trying to keep a beat. Well, I'll be retired now. Let these young bucks handle it. But anyway, I'd rather do that. And he's like, no, you got to do it. And what it does is it shows that your fear, watch this, doesn't always get you fired. Whoop! And I need about 25 of y'all to understand that just because you have a fear of something, it does not mean that you cannot get over it. Can I, can I give you a verse in the Bible that ought to help you today? I'm going to give you two of them. First of all, greater is he that is within you 
than he that is in the world. In other words, if God is in you, there's not a fear that can overwhelm and overtake you that God can give you the strength and the power to get through and to get over. Hallelujah. But here's the other one I want you to understand. I can do all things. Now watch this. Not in my own strength. Not in my own power, not with my own vernacular, not with my own dialect, not with my own rhetoric, not with my own vocabulary. But right now, I can rightly divide the word of truth. It gets rough sometimes, but I can repetitively repeat myself over and over again with ours. And you didn't even know I took speech lessons because God allowed me to conquer my fear. Is there anybody in this house that says God gives favor to those who are fearless. Let me hurry on here and give you these little things. So you need to understand that the citizens have an obedient heart and righteous souls according to verses 13 through 14. Look what he says. All your children shall be taught by the Lord. Now I, I got to stop right there and praise God. That God says I myself will become their teacher. Now, come on, parents, let's be honest. As good of a parent as you may be, you missed it sometimes. And I find some honest parents in here that say, man, I didn't make all the right decisions. Matter of fact, heck, I didn't even pick the best, uh, uh, uh. <laughs> I didn't pick the best co-parent, but you know, God has grace. I can't get no help in here today. But look what he says. In spite of all that, <laughs> he says, I, help me, Lord. I, I'm gone. All your children shall be taught by the Lord. Here's the difference. When we teach and when God teach, when we teach, they don't know nothing. They get on my nerves. Always in my business. They need to mind. And he's, why are they always trying to tell me what to do? And why are they always trying to do it? When we teach, <sighs> mama need to know I'm grown. I'm grown. And since I'm there, let me pause parenthetically and have another moment. You can't be grown still depending on your parents. You mad at me. You mad at me. But I'm going to tell you something. You're mad at me, but you, 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 no, no. You grown when you got your own. Are you hearing me? And watch this, you paying for it. You ain't have your other stuff in somebody else's name. Yeah, this is the part to get me about our cut. You're going to get in somebody else's name and still not pay the bill. What's wrong with you? You tried to. Okay, I'm back. I'm back. I'm, what was I saying? All right. So he said, I'm going to teach them. Are y'all with me in this house? He said, all your children shall be taught by the Lord and great shall be the peace of your children. See, because when God teaches, we get the message. And can I tell you, to some parent who's wrestling with your child, some grandparent wrestling with your child, would you turn them over to the master teacher? Because his lesson plan has a way of humbling us and bringing us to a place of peace. If they're living a chaotic life, if they're living a confused life, if they're living a trifling life, turn them over to the prince of peace. When he gets done teaching them, when he gets done taking them to school. Oh, I'm almost done. Here it is. He says, be taught of the Lord, and great shall be the peace of your children. Peace comes over the life of those who have received life lessons from the Lord. Some of the best lessons in life, I didn't get at some desk in high school. I didn't get any of the uh, uh, other higher learning institutions that I've attended. I got it directly from the school of Christ. When God taught me lessons, I got it the first time. 
Y'all ain't saying nothing to me. I understood. He began to give me lessons about people. He began to give me lessons about money. He began all these things I got from God, and it helps me understand. And it made life more peaceful. Because you start living more fearless when you get life lessons from the God who conquers all fears. Are you with me? Here it is. He says, this is where it gets real interesting. Verse 14. In righteousness, you shall be established. See, God is establishing us in righteousness. Watch this. Doesn't mean that we're always right. But he's establishing us in righteousness. He is our righteousness. We stand complete in him. So when God establishes us in righteousness, when we're wrong, by his spirit, he convicts us, and we want to get right with him because we want to operate in righteousness. Are y'all staying with me? So here it is. You shall be, watch this, far from oppression. You shall, for you shall not fear. See, fear is an oppressor. Fear will keep you in bondage. You need to get as mad at fear that you have in your life as you do the injustice that's happening in our nation. Because there's another dimension of freedom that happens when you conquer your fear. I'm almost done. Here it is. And from terror, for it shall not come near you. I tell you, there's some stuff that's trying to come your way that doesn't have permission from God to get close enough to hurt you. And, and here's the shout. Some of this stuff was being plotted and planned while you were totally unaware. While we were totally oblivious. You were going about your day you were asleep. You were at work. You were on a date. And this stuff was coming together to conspire against you. And God says, it does not pass clearance to come near my child. Let me hurry on here. He says this climactically, that there's favor on the fearless. And I need you to see that. Because when you're fearless, when you operate in this freedom, uh, being free, that you don't have to walk in fear, the favor is now none of this stuff can shift me and oppress me because I rise above it. All right, here's the final two verses and I'm gone. The favor of the faithful is seen. In verses 15 through 17, it's technically three verses, but I need you to see it. It says, if anyone stirs up strife, it is not for me. Okay? Did you catch that? If anyone stirs up strife, confusion, animosity, beef, it's not for me. This is a word to some of my millennials in the house. Be careful of these friends who are always trying to run back and tell you some foolishness that somebody else did or said trying to stir up strife, trying to stir up confusion, trying to make you mad at somebody because they don't like them. Because that's not of God. God is not the author of confusion and neither should be the order of his house. Huh? He says, he says, look, whoever stirs up strife with you shall fall because of you. And see, this is what I don't understand about haters. You so busy wanting me to fail, you don't even realize you're just making me win more. He says, you're going to fall because of the individual that you're trying to come against. Now verse 16 is where I really got blessed. Behold, I've created the smith. Talks about the blacksmith, if you will, who blows fire of coals and produces a weapon in its 
purpose. Now, we need to understand that weapons are formed. Okay? Weapons are made. Weaponry is designed to destroy. Right? Nobody, when they first came out with guns, when they first came out with archery, this stuff wasn't for recreation. It was to defend. It was for to attack. It was for to destroy. So no, that word destroy in the Hebrew talks about a spoiler. It talks about destruction. Literally means a snare for a bird. See, when a bird is caught in a snare, first thing it does is it prevents it from flying. It can no longer take off. Y'all missing me. Y'all missing me. Not only can it not take off, don't miss this, but eventually it sucks the life out of the bird. And that's what enemies desire to do. They never want to see you take off. They never want to see you go to the next level, to the next dimension, to the next place. But literally, they will try to suck the life off of you. They want to ruin you. They want to destroy you. They want to terminate you. They want to cause so much damage that you cannot ever be replaced or repaired. They want to do so much damage that you no longer exist. I remember... I was in consultation with an individual who was trying to get a business started. The person was telling me about a person who was doing something remotely similar to them. And the person told them that I'm going to put you out of business. I said, they said, what? They said it was going to put me out of business. I said, well, what kind of mentality is that? I don't have to put you out of business in order for my business to thrive or be successful. I'm going to use something as for example for you. You know, when I was a little boy, Pizza Hut had two locations in town. Had a location on 250. Had a location on Cleveland Road. Y'all remember that one? Now I think they turned into a little gambling spot or something. Gaming spot, they call it gaming. Gaming gambler, they owe that gambler. Whatever. Anyway, but all these other pizza joints start popping up, popping up, popping up, popping up, popping up. Y'all know, Sandesi, we got more ice cream and pizza joints. I mean, my goodness, what we eating around here? But anyway, they're everywhere. But Pizza Hut, been in the same location, the one on Clinton Road closed, because they, they stayed open. But then I noticed the other day, Pizza Hut doesn't move on Perkins Avenue. Now, they went from two locations to one location. And then they transitioned to another location. But you know what's still the same? Pizza Hut's still making pizza. They didn't have to try to put Cameo, Chet and Matt's, Marco's, Eats and treats. Now they sell pizza everywhere. They try to put them in. I think Subway had pizza for a minute. See, what's wrong with us is we think somebody else has to fail in order for us to win. But see, since God is so good and so great and so awesome, he says all there's enough in the earth that, that multiple people can be successful and there's enough to go around. Tell somebody, I don't have to destroy you in order for me to be successful. I'm closing, I'm closing, I'm closing. He says, he says, all of this has happened. They produce weapons, but they produce it for a purpose. I've also given the ravenger, created the ravenger to destroy. In other words, the very thing that does the destroying was made by God too. See, some things that can hurt us 
also have the ability to help us. And I want to argue today, maybe we miss our assignment by focusing on the negative aspect instead of seeing the blessed aspect. Let me get to this final verse and I'm done. I, I'm out of time. I, I had so much more, but I'm holding y'all too long. Verse 17 says this and I'm done. No weapon. Formed against you shall prosper. Here what that says to me. That although the weapon was designed to destroy me, its design will be defeated. It was literally developed to destroy me. It was created. It was manufactured. It was formed to come against me. But it's not going to work. Somebody say, it won't work. See, it won't work. It won't. It does not have the ability to work against you when God has already spoke that it cannot work. No weapon that's formed against you shall prosper. Watch this. And you shall refute every tongue that rises against you in judgment. In other words, when you come against to judge what the Lord is doing in my life, I'll be able to refute it not so much with my words or with my verbiage, but what God is doing in my life. Because many people think that if I have a weapon that's formed against you, to come against you, to destroy you, that if you're unable to do what you're doing right now, you've been destroyed. But can I tell you, God can do it in multiple ways. God does not have to do it in the way you think it needs to be done or it should be done. God can do it another way. That's why the old saints used to say, any way you bless me, Lord. <laughs> I'll be satisfied. Look what he says. Every tongue that rises against you in judgment, this is the heritage of the servants of the Lord and their vindication from me, declares the Lord. In other words, he says, I'm going to make sure that these weapons are powerless. I'm going to make sure that your enemy's plans fail. I'm going to make sure that what's designed to destroy you, it can't even get close enough to do harm to you or towards you. And so, what are you saying, Pastor Johnson? I'm saying you need to see God expanding us by what he does to our enemies. I think he reveals it in the text. He had the enemy waste their time. You spend all this time planning and plotting, scheming to destroy me. And you put all that effort in, and it's not even going to work. Okay, maybe that didn't move you. Let me see if I can catch you here. Have you ever been excited on the 4th of July, waiting on the fireworks? But I remember down south, you can pop them all year long. We got some fireworks. We got our little money together. We went to the fireworks store. We were excited. We got the firecracker out there. It was one of them big old ones. We just waiting, a big old spectacle. And we went and lit it, and we went to run it. We watch it. We grin it. We watch it. And it fizzled down. The wick went all the way down, got there. And nothing happened. We all looked at each other. I'm like, y'all go check it out. I ain't putting my face over there. But. but what happened was, it had all the potential to be explosive. But it was defective. The manufacturer invested in it. We burnt gas going to the store and invested in it. We, we came all the way back. We anticipated, but it still wouldn't work. And that's what I came to tell 
somebody today. The reason why we ought to celebrate today is that there's been some damage control. There's some spiritual, Lord help me in here, malfunctions that had happened. There's been some things pointed in your direction. There's been some traps that's been laid out before you. But here you are in the sanctuary and online giving God the praise because it wouldn't work. Because God protected and preserved you from your enemies. Is there anybody here that can help me close this Sunday school lesson? Look down your row and say, neighbor, I'm so glad that there's not a weapon that's formed against me that has the ability to prosper against me because if God before me he's more than the world against me tell him it's time to expand because the Lord has a position for all of his children our position is secured in Christ our portion is secured in Christ our title is secure in Christ our safety is secured in Christ and is there anybody here that can give God a praise that he's protecting you and your family, your children, and your children's children are protected because the Lord, oh bless his name, keeps us safe. Can I find a witness that will help me close? Tell somebody it's time to expand. Don't let fear overwhelm you. Don't let fear overtake you. But no, God's got plans for your life. God's got plans to take you to the next dimension. God's got plans to take you to the next level. Lean over and tell somebody, I'm so glad. Tell them I'm so glad that weapons always don't work. But the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they're mighty through our God to the pulling down of strongholds. Greater is he that is within me than he that is in the world. Somebody say, why are you hollering now? Why you getting excited? Because I'm looking back over my life and I feel like the old school saints through danger, seen and unseen. Oh, shucks. There were some weapons that were designed to take me out. I remember when I was switched at birth, but it didn't work. I remember coming down the Ohio Turnpike, 60 miles per hour. My front wheel flew off, but it didn't work. I remember somebody slandering my name, but it didn't work. Is there anybody? that can testify you got a testimony that some weapons came your way but it didn't work and can I find a witness with me to give God glory that it just didn't work it malfunctioned it couldn't do it it had potential but it didn't have power it had potential, uh, but the purpose couldn't come forth. Uh, say it! Yeah. Say it! Yeah. Say it! Yeah. Hey, hey, hey. I gotta quit. I gotta quit. Yes, sir. I wanted to shout about 
the stuff that I know about. I wanted to get happy about the stuff that I can remember. But this next praise is for the stuff I didn't even know was coming my way. Anybody glad that God kept you covered? Anybody glad that he kept his hand on your life? Shout no weapon, no weapon, no weapon, yeah! Somebody said high blood pressure couldn't take me out. Diabetes couldn't take me out. Cancer couldn't take me out. And I believe I got some witnesses that said Corona couldn't take me out. No weapon. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm going to leave it alone. I'm going to leave it alone. I'm going to leave it alone. Shay, I'm going to leave it alone. Sister Carol, I'm going to leave it alone. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I need about 50 people just throw your head back and shout, thank you. Shout, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, sir. Bless his name. I'm a witness. I'm a witness. I'm a witness. It could have been another way. It could have been another way. Should have been dead and gone. But hey! My God, my God. Stand with me, stand with me. Come on, stand with me. My God, my God. My God, my God. My God, my God. Woo! Woo! My God, my God. You know, I'm going to let this go. I'm going to move. But you know, it's kind of like life is this obstacle course. And we're traveling through with all of these daggers and weaponry coming at us. And what God allows us to do is just <laughs> go through and jump over hurdles and allow stuff, bullets that were meant for us to miss us. And daggers that were meant for us to miss us. And you know, when I see that, I... Even in the spirit, I see so many people running for their lives. Hallelujah. And should have been tracked down a long time ago. But God didn't allow it to catch up with you. Woo. And most of us can testify. We've known, we've done enough that we should have been gone from here. But God didn't let it catch up with us. Woo. 
Is there anybody can give God a praise that the devil thought he had you, but you got away? I'm going to give you 30 seconds to give God glory for the great escape. Come on. One, two, somebody. Thank you, Lord. So what I need you to understand is you cannot give credit to your enemies. You got to give glory to God. Enemies are essential. Catch this. Don't miss it. Enemies are essential to your expansion. Don't miss this. I said enemies are essential to your expansion. Prove it. Okay, thank you. Come here, come here, come here, Jesus. Jesus sitting at the table with his homies. He says, when are you going to betray me? Well, wait a minute. We out to dinner together. We kicking it. We boys. We've been hanging out. When are you going to betray me? Matter of fact, the one who dip after me, you're going to be the one. When are you going to even deny me? So we got a doubter, we got a denier, and we got a betrayer all that God sent him, all that he handpicked. But they were in his sphere of influence. But watch what Jesus does. He goes, and remember, Judas sells him out for 30 pieces of silver. But he was essential. He was necessary because previous times they tried to get Jesus, and Jesus just moved. He went through, they didn't even know. They said, like, where'd he go? How'd he do that? But Judas says, the one I kiss is the one. He identifies Jesus. He's a part of the plan. He's essential to Jesus' expansion. Jesus goes to the cross. You know what happens? He hung. He bled. He died. He rose on the third day. And now he said, here's my expansion. You shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you. He says, my expansion didn't come full circle until my enemies were exposed. Yeah, yeah. Ah! And you walking around here so mad that folk don't like you. The Bible says, woe unto us if everybody likes us and loves us. You need a few enemies. You need a few haters to help keep us humble, to help keep us in a place of prayer. Stop giving your attention to the negative and focus on what the Lord has already done. So over the next several months, you're going to see things that you haven't seen before. Character flaws, character issues, things that you once thought were okay, but now you're discovering it's not cool. And let me, let me say this, because I want to be very clear. That not every enemy is a hateful enemy. Catch what I'm throwing at you. Just because God is using them and allow them to come this way, doesn't mean that there's got to be some animosity. Sometimes seasons are just over transitional seasons. Every friend, every acquaintance is not a friend or family member for life. You know, that type of thing. You know, some people you were cool with in school, y'all just ain't cool no more. Y'all ain't fall out, you just, life took you different directions. Huh? And sometimes that happens even in our adult life. Don't make it a beef. Don't make it a, I can't stand them. Don't, one minute you was the kids, God, parent, the next minute you know, took the child out there like, come on, we gotta grow up. Huh? Kids ain't got nothing to do with adult mess. Choose better godparents then. Look, I, I still got mine. I'm 40. And adopted one. She here this morning. Adopted one when I was about 13, 14. She here this morning. My parents chose well. And I did too. See? That's why you just don't pick friends. You pray over it. Say, God, who do you want me? It's serious. It's a part of your village. All right, I'm done. I want to pray with you.
Are you still with me online? I want you to pray with us too. I want you to catch this. Father, thank you for revealing this word to us today. We will never look at our enemies the same again. We will never take for granted how many times you have spared our lives from the attack of the enemy, the onslaught of the enemy. Oh my goodness, I, I thank you so very much for your grace and your mercy. I, I thank you so much for being a God who gives another chance. There are people watching this message and people who are here this morning, God, who authentically love you, who really desire you to do more in their lives. I'm asking as your servant and your son that you would make yourself so real to them. Beyond church, beyond a worship experience, personally make yourself real to them. God, I pray in this season as you began to expose enemies, haters, naysayers, I pray that you would strengthen us from the inside out, that we won't walk in fear, we will walk in faith. And I ask that you would seal this word in our hearts as we go forward in life. Our responsibility to praise you is even more intense now than ever before because we know you've done so much for us. We're forever grateful. And in this season of expansion, never let us take life for granted. You've been so good. We thank you. Seal this word in our hearts that we will go forth and honor you with our lives and not just our lips. We thank you and we praise you now in Jesus' name. If you're here today and you need a relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ, we want to offer Christ to you today. And you're here, you say, Pastor Jay, I'm saved, but I need a church home. New Jay extends its arm to you today. We will open our arms wide, let you know that we're an imperfect church, but we love a perfect God. And we'll lead you directly to him. If you want salvation, you come today by letter, candidate for baptism, or even Christian experience. Even those of you who are viewing online, you can join even via the cyber sanctuary. You can message our page or you can even list there. I want to unite with this ministry however you want to do it. We'll give you this opportunity in this moment, even now. Hallelujah. Lift this to the Lord. Simple song says, No weapon formed against shall prosper, shall prosper. It won't work. It won't work. Say it again. No weapon formed against shall prosper, shall prosper. It won't work. I know that God will do what he said. He will stand. He will come through. He, God will do, God, what he said, he will, will stand by, he will, oh, no weapon form, God bless you, share, very quickly as we prepare to go we're remaining standing because we're done we have a baby dedication today for young master dom and i want to give this benediction if you need to leave our desire to leave we'll give you that moment to do that we ask that the family the well wishes and friends will remain as we prepare to do this baby dedication for young uh, let me see if i get it right dominique daryl james mcdonald did i get it right all right he growing up on me already Amen, amen, amen. And on your way out, you certainly can drop your offering, your tithes and offering, and any of these black receptacles. Our usher will come by and release you. If you want to rest, uh, remain for the baby dedication, we ask that you would just take your seat and keep your seat. Amen. If you're leaving, you can just, amen, go the opposite way out and uh, dismiss yourself very quickly and quietly. With uplifted hands, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you. The Lord be gracious unto you and give you peace. 
in Jesus' name.